Welcome back everybody, Rodrigo here with another episode of Asheville Real Estate News. Uh, really excited to bring you a show today uh, about homelessness and providing housing. So uh, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know uh, I'm a big fan of Homeward Bound. And today I was joined by Amber and Eleanor over at Homeward Bound to talk about their exciting new launch and new podcast that they're putting out. Uh, we also talk a little bit about you know the vision of Homeward Bound uh, and just housing in general. So hope you enjoy this episode, share it with the landlord. If you are a landlord, hope, hope it's something of valuable and just uh, helps you realize the importance of housing. So uh, thank you as always, any reviews, comments, feedback is always appreciated. And we look forward to talking to you guys on the next one. Take care. Hey, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Rodrigo here, and I'm joined by Amber and Eleanor with uh, Homeward Bound, and got exciting conversation today about the podcast that they're launching, and you know everything else that they do here in the community. So, uh, first off, welcome, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Um, I know we were talking a little bit off camera. I think it's maybe like the fourth, third or fourth podcast, definitely third might be the fourth that we've done with, uh, with somebody at Homeward Bound. So, um, you know, personally, we're all, we're definitely big fans of everything you guys do in the community and, and the, and the vision that you all have. So, um, I think maybe that'd be a great starting point is if anybody hasn't heard any of those previous episodes or isn't aware, do you, do you guys mind just sharing what the overall like mission or the vision that Homeward Bound has and, and why it is what it is? Sure. Um, our mission is to provide permanent housing and support for people experiencing homelessness. So to ultimately end homelessness in our community. Uh, we've been around for 30 years, started as hospitality house, um, as an emergency shelter. And then um, A Hope was built, which is our homeless day center. And um, we went into a partnership with the city uh, to end homelessness about in the late uh, 90s. And uh, since then, we transitioned from shelter to finding permanent housing and using the housing first model. So since then, um, since 2006, we've housed 1,950 people and 89% have not returned to homelessness. So we attribute that success to the fact that we're not just putting them in a home or a house. We um, also provide support for them for as long as they need it. And that support can look like, um, you know, helping with grocery shopping, teaching how to clean the house, um, filling out paperwork for disability income, um, being there if they need us for an emotional, you know, support. Mm -hmm. So our case manager support ranges, you know, anywhere from, you know, something very simple to something, you know, yeah, not the so full simple. spectrum. <laughs> the full spectrum, exactly. Yeah. Um, Amber, is there anything you want to add to that? Or I think Eleanor encompassed it pretty spectacularly. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, I, I want to talk about housing first because I think that, um, so I grew up in Bogota, Colombia, and th there's definitely a very large like homeless population, uh, you know, big cities. That's kind of normal. Bogota is, depending who you ask, anywhere between 8 to 10 million when I was growing up there. And there's always growing up there's always this conversation that you had with people who were were that like working in in you know with those communities it's what's more important is is it like can you give somebody a house if they don't deserve it care for it or ready for it or it's the other way around first um and obviously you guys have decided to address the housing first um can you maybe talk a little bit about why was that decision versus you know maybe focusing on i don't know dependency issues or, or whatever the other cases might be? Sure. I'll say a few words and then Amber jump in. Um, so the housing first model is best practice. It's been around for 30 years and it works, you know, to try to change people and work with people when they're in survival mode, living on the streets just doesn't work. And um, you get them into permanent housing, 
they start eating better, they start sleeping better, their mental health improves, their physical well-being improves, and more receptive to services, and it's just a game changer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, one of what Amber and I do, we're in the resource development department, Amber's our communication manager, and I'm the resource development director, but we often will interview our clients once we get them into housing. And the difference is dramatic. You know, when they're living on the streets, every day is about survival. Mm -hmm. And um, once they get into housing, it's just, you know, they can relax a little bit, they can get healthy. And, and it's also economically better for to get folks into housing than it is for them to to live on the streets. It costs you know three thousand dollars for a year in housing, and um, it's you know thirty thousand dollars for a year on the streets. So right. it makes a big difference. Amber, you have anything to add? Yeah, kind of jumping up what uh, mentioned, we talk about a lot internally how when somebody's offered a locked door, their whole personality changes. Um, you know, you can't expect somebody to behave the same way when they're in survival mode on the streets as they would when they're put into housing. And a lot of people, unfortunately, just see that front end and expect that people can't move into housing and take care of themselves and take care of their unit yeah. because they're just witnessing the absolute survival mode of a human being. They're not witnessing what that human is actually like when they're, you know, in a safe and loving environment. And I think a lot of people struggle with humanizing homeless individuals because they really are just seeing the survival instinct that, um, that's present, presented to them when they're, you know, coming across people on the streets who are protecting the very little valuables that they might have. So. Yeah, I think um, the, the survival instinct thing is, is interesting because, uh, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, and I think anybody can relate to this. I know this. It's like when you go to your primal, like whatever your primal is, it's typically not like pretty, right? Because it's right. very just like you get those instincts that come out. You're, there's not, there's no thought process, the intentionality. The fight and, or flight. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't have this exactly. ability to curate how you're going to interact or show up for something the right. same way. So, um, right. I, yeah, I, I, it's I thought that was very well put. I just wanted to kind of touch on that yeah. a little bit. Um, well, talking about the, the, you know, you've having these interviews with people after they're in housing, before housing, um, I'm, I, and, you know, kind of this conversation as far as having you all on the show started with the podcast that you guys just launched. And I'm just wondering, did those conversations like lead to like, wow, like this would be great to highlight the differences or totally separate and they just, you know, I guess, how did the podcast come to be? Or what was the inspiration for it and, and, and whatnot? Uh, I guess I'll take this one. Um, it actually was kind of a freak accident in the best kind of way. <laughs> um, we sat down with one, or I sat down with one of our case managers, Brian, who you mm -hmm. hear in the first episode of the podcast, uh, just planning on chatting with him about a article we were thinking about writing for our newsletter. Mm -hmm. And I chose to record it just for the sake of going back and writing it out. And halfway through his interview, he was just giving me such incredible material that I just immediately thought, oh my gosh, he has such a fantastic voice and such a fantastic way of saying things. We, yeah. we would be at a loss to not put this in a podcast format mm -hmm. so that we can really hear the passion and the tone to his voice and understand how passionate our case managers and our people who are doing that day-to-day -day work and who are you know, on the front line, so to speak, have for our clients and for what we do. Yeah, I, I listened to it. I thought it was... Well, A, very well produced, which is really, it's always fun to hear like a good product, but B, like what you said too, it, it's, there's, yeah, that emotion wouldn't have gotten translated into a written format in the same way. And I, I think that's important. That's one of the things that, you know, on our end, we've always enjoyed working with, with you guys as an organization is because there's like this incredible buy-in from everybody who, who's part of it of like, no, like we believe in what we're doing and this is important for us. Um, where, where, what, what is the goal with the podcast? Do you know yet? Are you just kind of seeing what happens or, 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 you know, how did it go from good conversation to like, let's put this, you know, on air? Yeah. Um, my primary goal is really to have our donors and our supporters and anybody who's interested in what we do have better access to us on a kind of ground level. Mm -hmm. You know, you can read all about us. You can watch videos that we put out. But there's something about a podcast and having that conversational tone and really getting into, into deep conversation with people 
that really sparks a lot of passion in people. So I really wanted to make that accessible and, you know, bring more life to kind of the day-to-day -day actions of Homeward Bound instead of just this overall encompassing uh, look that we typically take. Just because I think it'll bring more people to us, it'll bring pe more resources to us, and it'll make uh, our mission and what we do a little bit more accessible. You know, we have people who don't have time to sit down and read our newsletter or sit down and watch a video. Anybody can listen to a podcast on their way to work, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so I really just, the main thing is making us more accessible and bringing more passion to what we're doing. And this is so true because, you know, we can see who opens our newsletters. We try to put out two a month. Um, they're e-newsletters. One mm -hmm. of them has a client story and then others are just updating on what's happening at Homeward Bound. And I think so many people listen to the podcast that hadn't been reading our newsletters. So that was really interesting for me to see. Um, and um, so I think we are, you know, opening up a whole new, um, you know, way for people to listen to it. Like Amber said, it's easy just to, to listen to it as opposed to take the time to read a newsletter. So, and who knew she had such a good voice? <laughs> I mean, that was a total shock to me. You know, she was telling me that she could do this podcast and I said, oh, okay, we'll do it. And then I'll listen to it. We'll, we'll see what we think. It was phenomenal, yeah. you know, so yeah, so she did such a good job of producing it that I'm really excited and going forward about, we figure we'll try to do one once a month mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we'll interview staff. Um, as Amber was saying, you know, uh, Brian is a frontline worker at AHO and rarely do we get that perspective. Um, that we can give to our supporters. So um, that's kind of what we want to do. We want to do a deep dive into subjects that are timely, mm -hmm. especially like this eviction moratorium that, you know, was lifted and then, you know, now it's, it's happening again. So um, it, hopefully it will be uh, topics like that that are, are timely and, and real interesting to our listeners. Yeah. Quick plug on, on our end. So two episodes ago, we just released a really good episode. We spent almost an hour talking with an attorney, um, a landlord attorney, a tenant landlord relation attorney about the moratorium. Um, wow. Yeah. So if you had missed it, go back and listen I'll to it. It's all good stuff, guys. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I want to come back to the eviction thing now that you brought it up because I'm very curious to, to kind of see your view of it and, 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 and talk about that just very briefly, like 30 seconds. But um, going back to the podcast is it seems like you, Eleanor, specifically were a little surprised by the response. Amber, were you surprised too? Or did you kind of like feel like you'd captured like lightning in a bottle? Like after you listened to it, you're like, oh, this is <laughs> this is good. This is good. Um, I don't know that I felt um, quite that excited about it. Um, I kind of... <laughs> And it's that excitement once Eleanor called me because uh, the first words out of her mouth were, oh my God, and I'm, you know, I'm going to get fired, oh my God, or this is great. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, after that, I kind of realized, and I, and, you know, we got great feedback internally. Everybody was really excited about it. And then we started getting really great feedback externally once it was published. And that's when I kind of realized, okay this could really take us places. This could really get us a lot of really good attention. And, you know, I also just really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy getting to sit down and talk with people yeah. and, you know, really just have that experience. So. No, I, yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. As far as the, the, the talking to people, um, do you, do you feel like you, you're going to be able to, to communicate in a little bit of a different way? Like, I think that it's, easy to get people to be like, yeah, like I want to be part of ending homelessness. Like where do I sign up? How do I make a donation or whatever the case might be versus being like, wow, like I'm internalizing and feeling like why it's necessary. Right. Like, cause there's sometimes a little bit of a, a difference between believing and supporting something and then like internalizing that. Is that something that you guys are going for or is it, or if it happens, it's just like a byproduct and, and a good byproduct. I think that's something I'm definitely striving for. Uh, you know, I joined Homeward Bound fairly recently. I've only been on, on the team about, uh, I want to say two or three months now. Okay. But I was very drawn to Homeward Bound because of what we do. I thoroughly believe 
in the values that we have that every human being is worthy of respect and dignity. And I really believe that, you know, housing first is best practice and that, you know, in order to help somebody build themselves up, you have to give them the right environment for that. And I think when you hear somebody talking, it's like I mentioned earlier, when you have a conversation with somebody, you really understand on a level that you can't through written word or through video, because all of that just comes off a little stale sometimes. You know, it's, it's great most of the time, but it gets old after a while. And you really want that input and that voice, especially right now with everything happening with COVID. We are so distanced and we are so separated from our peers in a way that we never have been before. So we're really seeking that connection and that mm-hmm. conversation. And, and, you know, just wanting to be close to people. So I think we'll really, um, we'll really come across that. And I really am striving to, to have that happen. Yeah, no, of course it makes sense. Are there uh, any specific guests that you've recorded with that you could share? Drop some teasers for us as far as what's coming down the pipeline and, and when we can expect the next episode? Uh, you can expect it probably by the end of this month, fingers crossed. Um, no specific guests I can cite. I'll just kind of give you a teaser. It's close to our welcome home donation center. This go around. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, 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 on the podcast, I'm wondering if, um, have you, as you've been thinking about this, either one of you and just realizing like, well, wow, like this is like new and it, it's opening different doors. Are there any conversations like that you're, maybe selfishly excited to have like a conversation that hasn't happened before or a person that you're like, Oh, now this is the good excuse to like, I know when I started this podcast, that was one of the things I realized like a couple you know, months now, I was like, wow, like this is a really good, like we probably wouldn't be talking otherwise right now with it or for the podcast. Right. And I was like, this is like, a, like selfish. I was like, man, this is a great excuse to talk to people in ways that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. I, have you, has that come in yet or have, has that played out yet? Not until just now. You talked about it. <laughs> That's actually a great idea. Now my brain is spinning mm-hmm. on who who we could actually um, interview. You know, yeah. we're we've got our hands in so many different things. Home right. Down right now, we're we're doing sheltering at the Red Roof Inn. Um, we've got over a hundred folks that were living outside. We brought them inside because of COVID and we partnered with the city and the county. Um, We're also looking to purchase land or a building so that we can have a, um, uh, an apartment complex for our our hard to house folks. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there, yeah, it, we're also talking to the police chief about, you know, a, a different model of where we could possibly be called in if there are issues where they're called, where it's somebody who's homeless, mm-hmm. you know, somebody who's having some, you know, mental illness, that type of thing. So, so you've just got my mind thinking about a whole lot of people that we could get in for interviews. Um, so thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. You're welcome. I was just like, I was wondering, cause again, like it took me a while to, to realize that. And then I was like, Oh, this is like so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But ours, what, what I think we need to, so it was an eight minute podcast yes. and I felt like that was a good length of time because I don't know, people I'm afraid will think if it's too long that they don't have the time to listen to it. So um, what's your, your feeling? Is, is your podcast like an hour, Rodrigo? Or? Um, it, it varies a little bit. Like typically our goal is for them to be around 30 minutes, mm-hmm. but we've definitely had some that have been longer and, and some of them are shorter, right? Because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. if we're in a role, I don't want to interrupt a good conversation just to try yeah. to keep time, you know? And the same things either. I'm not going to just like ask random boring questions or just try to force a conversation. If after 15 minutes we've talked and it's like, man, like this was like, we hit what we wanted to hit. We talked, you know, like then there's no reason for it to continue. I I would say is like, and you know, I think that as long as people you're putting out a conversation that people are interested in, I don't think it matters how long it is. Um, I'm like, Good to know. Yeah, yeah, this is all new to us. So yeah. we're, you know, kind of playing it by ear to see I mean, how long it should be. Yeah, so Joe Rogan, 
is like mm. probably the most famous podcaster. I mean, his right. podcast episodes are like two to three hours oftentimes. Right, so. I know. <laughs> so I think that problem. like, I, I, I think it's like living proof is if you're doing a good job, people like won't care how long it is, even if it requires, right. you know, five listens, you know, to, to yeah. get through it. And that is the nice thing about a pod. You pause, you go do something else. You always come back and hit play. So. Right, um, exactly. That's great. Yeah, so I guess anything else on the podcast because i do want to come back to the eviction thing really briefly and then and then kind of move on <laughs> i don't think anything except just to know that we're excited and you know we we're really thrilled to be moving forward with it where do people right. listen and sign up and, and get notified that's missing yeah. that's really and missing. we would love listener feedback on it we've told our staff that yeah. we're we're interested in getting stories from them and mm-hmm who they want to hear on the podcast. And I, I'd love to put that out to, to all the listeners. Cool. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you can find us on SoundCloud. Our username is Homeward Bound WNC. Uh, and we are informing people of new episodes via our newsletter. Uh, so you can go to our website, uh, click on find more information. It'll email our general account and I can sign you guys up for the newsletter. So cool. And, and we'll include those links uh, in the show note, of course, as well. Right. Um, all right, so this eviction moratorium, really quickly. I, I mean, what are your thoughts about it? <laughs> is this a good thing? Um, I mean, obviously, the, the intention behind it is really good, but sometimes, you know, that doesn't mean that the, it's going to play out that way. What, how, how are you all feeling? What's the feedback you've gotten or what have you heard? I'll say a few words and yeah. then, Amber, you can talk. Um, you know, it is a good thing, but it's a Band-Aid. And it's short term, you know, people don't have to pay their rent right now, but they will Mm -hmm. at the end of the period of time. And what, how is that, you know, to me, that's going to be very difficult because they're going to have a whole lot of back rent to pay. So um, I have a a great deal of concerns about it. Um, I think um, supporting a rental assistance program makes a whole lot more sense. So that's what we would like to see happen. Uh, Amber? Um, I think like Eleanor said, it's sort of a double-edged sword in that, you know, yes, people have the relief in the moment, but that debt does collect. And when we hit, I believe it, it ends at the December 31st, when we hit the beginning of 2021, there's going to be a lot of people that have thousands of dollars of backed up debt and rent that they couldn't pay. Um, so rental assistance would be a much better fix than a moratorium on, on uh, evictions. Um, you know, and not to mention landlords can also charge, I believe it's either $15 or 15% of rent as a late fee, depending, and they can choose whichever one is more. Um, so it's really just building up debt and, you know, it's, it's really just a Band-Aid. And the landlords, they're suffering, you know, so we need something to help the landlords get their money. You know, it's just, ugh. It, it, there's a lot of, lot of holes in this, I think. Yeah, I, I think that we have yet to see um, all the unintended consequences that aren't gonna be positive for, for tenants more so than for landlords, I think, um, yeah. in the long term. Um, just when things like this happen, I think as a landlord, like you, 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 you might do things a little bit more conservatively, ask, you know, for two months of security deposit versus one, sign up only month to month leases versus year leases, all of these things come into play. So um, we talked about that a lot, so I'm not gonna get into it anymore. I just wanted to take the opportunity and, and hear your thoughts on it. Um, I, Eleanor, as you mentioned, you Homeward Bound, it's like, I don't know like how you guys do everything because it seems like you guys are <laughs> all over the place when it comes to, to, to housing, um, which obviously shows how big of, and how important of an issue it is. Um, is there anything that right now that Homeward Bound is doing that you want to draw some attention to or, or focus on and just share about or, or, or in you too, Amber, anything that, that that's relevant that obviously isn't about the yeah. podcast? Well, even though we're doing the sheltering and we're looking for property, you know, um, for long-term housing, we, we are still housing people. I mean, since the pandemic broke out, in March, in the stay at home order, we've housed 44 people. So we are, you know, often, you know, 
you hear about the, the frontline workers or hospital people and um, and they are, you know, but but the homeless services people are frontline workers too. Our folks at A Hope are are right there still supporting our clients and you know, we're still doing case management with them. It got a little sticky during the stay at home. We were trying to do it over the phone and trying to sit outside. And yeah. now yeah. It's, it's gotten a little bit easier, but um, we're just still working our mission, which is to find permanent housing for people and, and trying to end homelessness. So I feel like we have an incredible staff, totally dedicated to what they do and um, and they're doing a good job and no one has gotten sick yet, you know, in, in the homeless community, in our, our frontline workers, you know, we've been doing a really good job of, uh, keeping them safe. So Amber, you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, I, probably the only group we've neglected to mention is our volunteers. We still have regular mm -hmm. volunteers who are coming to a hope who are you know making sandwiches helping sort mail all the stuff that we really need help with and they have been just as incredible as the staff and deserve just as much uh, acknowledgement for what they've done um, you know you asked earlier if there was any group that I was a little selfishly excited to talk with and it really is our volunteers and our you know day-to-day -day staff because I have so much respect for what they do mm -hmm. or just the caliber at which they do it I mean, it is incredible how dedicated and um, admirable they are in what they do. So, yeah, no, that's uh, it's been a definitely a tumultuous couple of months, obviously, and and, and uh, yeah. especially being it, you know, in the in that I don't know, I guess sector of, of working on housing. It's uh, it's been it's been tricky for sure. I know from. Wow our end as, as, as people, you know, as a landlord with people who have, you know, some clients that are homeward bound clients as well, or I don't know what the proper term is, I guess, but parts participants or, or whatever, we, we've had a great experience working with you guys through this whole time. Um, right. So caseworkers have always been amazing. We've always, you know, no complaints at all. So uh, I'll just say, if you are a landlord and you've thought about it, it's, it's uh it's a, uh, it's well worth having the conversation and seeing if it's a good fit for you guys, as far as providing housing to, yeah. to somebody who's in homeward bound. Um, yeah, and we I, I actually did. have an incentive program, Lords, right now. Uh, it's, though I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think there might be a sign up bonus or something like that. So, yeah, okay. Heavy and I will be uh, correlating to something on that next week. Okay, so can do you mind repeating that? I think my internet came in and out, and I didn't catch everything. And I want to make sure we we get that because obviously that's that was important. So. Yeah, so there we have a landlord incentive program that we are just about to implement. And Amber, did you say we're announcing it next week? Yeah, Debbie and I are going to be correlating. I believe Debbie's going to be sending out an email, um, and I will be making posts on social media, kind of detailing what that um, looks like. Gotcha. Okay. No, well, that's that's great. Um, and, and yeah, so what? Um, any any closing thoughts as we wrap this up? Other than you know. Go listen to the podcast, of course. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, really to thank the community for their support. Um, I'll tell you, when the pandemic first hit and everybody had to stay at home, we had, we got donations like you wouldn't believe not, we got financial donations, but we got donations of socks and underwear and food and towels and furnishings and you know, the community just really came out and supported us. And we could not do this work without that support. So awesome. um, I want to thank everyone and just hope people will, will tune in and um, stay involved with us and, and hear what we're doing. And um, yeah, we're just thankful. Awesome. No, yeah. Amber, parting words? I think I'm going to say what Eleanor said. I don't think I could say it any better. So... <laughs> Awesome. Um, well, Amber, Eleanor, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to, to jump on the podcast. Um, excited for your podcast to keep hearing these stories and, and kind of getting that behind the scenes look. Um, so thanks for doing that. And yeah, thank talk you to you guys soon, good. hopefully. <laughs> okay. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks. Yep.
All right, you all, thanks for tuning into this episode. Um, share with a friend. If you know, if you are or know of a landlord, make sure you share with them specifically um, and, and be part of having this conversation and, and maybe being part of the solution as well if it makes sense. So uh, thank you all. We'll talk to you next week. Take care.